This is a tutorial on how to make a scatter plot in R. It's based on Chapter 6, Visualizing Relationships, in the book Visualize This by Nathan Yao. It's part of the Data Visualization class at San Francisco State University, taught by uh, Professor Trogo. This segment was taped on Monday, September the 22nd, 2014. So we're jumping ahead a little bit to chapter 6, which is the one I called Visualizing Relationships. But um, already some of you were doing scatter plots in this uh, second project. So, um, so again, go ahead and download um, all those pieces from iLearn. And the scatter plot exercise and just download all these um, five files. Okay. And so what we'll try to do is this final version, which is um, my sort of pretty version that I made in, in uh, Illustrator after I created the scatter plot in R. And, and the fancy things are really not too many. Uh, the little density effect or the bubbles overlap. The um, the legend, or the key rather, um, and there's a little trick on how to create this, again programmatically, you have to create like fake data so that gives you these bubbles <coughs> and how we made it uh, just an outline and not a fill. And then I made the grid really light and I made all the labels in Helvetica. Um, but you could you know, play with that in Illustrator once you bring it there. Uh, so right now, this is showing murder rates per 100,000 population in 2005 in the United States per state. Each dot is a state, and the size of the dot represents relative uh, population between the states. And on the XY, it's showing the Berkeley rate also per 1,000, per 100,000 population. Okay. So in this case, the two data, the, the two sets of data are like kind of similar, you know, it's crime and crime, but um, they could be completely different, right? And that's the nice thing about a scatter plot. Uh, so let's see if we can try uh, in R, when you open R, to set your working directory to the, let's see, file, let's see, where was it? That working directory, okay, under session. So choose directory, make sure it's the same, uh, same one. So in my case, it's today's date, okay. And here, import data set from text file. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, okay, this one, crime rates, okay. And, and it is a header and it's a comma separated. And let's just import it. And so because I did this already, a couple of things we're gonna have to do is actually get rid of United States and District of Columbia because eventually, because they United States is just a total, so we don't want that. And District of Columbia is such an outlier that looks makes the graph look funny, so we'll get rid of it. Um, anyway, the data looks good. So now, because I don't want to just um, completely cut and paste everything, I'll open the, uh, the text wrangler, right? And we'll just keep this handy just to to see what we need, right? Copy. So let's maybe let's just go over what this is gonna do, and then we will, uh, and then we'll actually do it. So the first one is just plotting the the data set, and we'll create that matrix, right? That we have seen um, with all possible pairs of columns. Um, this one is going to shorten the file to something a little more manageable, file name to crime2. Uh, this one 
it's going to say do not read District of Columbia because we don't want that particular piece of data and we're going to do the same with um, United States and these symbols just means if matches District of Columbia just do not yeah, it's, it's, it does not equal. Ah. Doesn't. Okay, so anything that is like that is not going to be red, basically. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, and here we're just trying like different things, right? In this case, we're trying to plot the murder and plot the burglary just because we've seen from the first one that that kind of looks interesting. I mean, in this case, all of them would be somewhat interesting um, and not just you know sets of straight lines but um, uh, this is what the book does shows regression line we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that but once we plot the dots we're gonna plot special dots I mean this happens to be circles but they could be squares and so to do that we're gonna say symbols and in each spot that these two sets of data are going to determine, it's going to put a circle, and the circle is going to be based on the population. Um, okay, I guess this we go through removing this. Okay, so one thing we're going to have to be careful of when we do bubbles is that they're not the area is not proportional to the number that they're representing. If you just do them, just kind of default. So you have to square that. So this is the little code that will say take that number and square it um, to make it proportional okay and here it's gonna tell you you're gonna put in how big the biggest one of those circles is gonna be in this case two tenths of an inch but um, you can change that um, okay and the reason for that is that if you double the if, if the number you're taking is say I think what it does it takes like the diameter right the dimension is really the diameter so if something is twice as big the area is actually four times as big which is not good um, and then it's gonna we're gonna put labels um, and then pretty much everything else is gonna be in let's see it's gonna be in illustrator except uh, oh yeah, except this, that we're going to create a key and this is going to be fake data and they're going to have um, in our data set. So how did I do this? I think I actually had to go back and change the data set because I don't think I knew how to do it programmatically. But um, So we're going to create fake states. They're going to be like the 100,000 state uh, or whatever, the 50 state, the uh, 100 state, and the 150, so that it gives us um, the key. Okay? Right here. Okay, right there. Um, so let's try to do this. if the text is the same. Um, um, let's see if this works. All right. Did something. And somehow. Ah, okay, there we are. Okay. Well, anyway, this is the exercise you should do kind of every time to see if you can see interesting stuff happening, right? And um, remember, we talked about so we're gonna we're gonna plot burglary and murder, and so that's uh, let's see what was it on murder? It was on the Y, so that would be here. And burglary was the axe. So for some reason this doesn't look oh yeah because it has yeah because it has the United States. It's weird though. Uh, doesn't seem the one that we're gonna do, but we're just gonna do it. 
Okay. Um, so again, let's shorten the name. of that. So for that from now on it's just going to be crime 2. So run. So it, cre it just created this new one and um, but we don't see it right. Well I mean we can click on it and now it just has a different name. Oops. Um, I guess we need to remove that. Well, let's see if we don't remove it. Let's see what happens actually, because otherwise. So, if we were to plot these two particular. Right? So, we're going to put on the X, we're going to put murder, murder, murder. And on the Y, we're going to put burglary. Um, so, let's see what happens. Yeah. So what, what happens now is that um, we have, for sure, we have this thing, which we, well, I know, but you wouldn't know. It's like, whoa, what is that? And what it is, it's, that's Washington, D.C. And Washington, this, I mean, yeah, District of Columbia. So the murder rate is, like, really high compared to everything else. And because it's a city. So because it's so skewed, the author of the book said, well, let's just get rid of it, which... Oh, it's, which is one way of dealing with it. Um, okay, so let's remove uh, those two, uh, which were this. Okay, so we're going to get rid of District of Columbia, and we're going to get rid of United States, because, again, that number doesn't if we show that giant bubble it's just gonna it's just gonna duplicate everything else right so, and nothing should happen really it's just that now the graph if we plot it again <clears throat> after we ran those two elimination things let's see what happens yeah so now it's a little it's a little better Okay, um, so now we're going to make them into circles, and that means we're just going to put a third argument in that, uh, in that line of code, and the third one will be this one. Okay, so instead of just saying plot, we're going to say specifically it's going to be symbols and there's different kinds. And in this case, it's going to be circles. And for that, we're going to take the population column. So those numbers are somewhere here. Okay, so these are the numbers. I notice that they're nice and clean already. There is no commas or anything like that, right? So let's just copy that. Oh, it's already here. Um, all right. So I don't know what you know what the default is now for creating these circles in terms of like the biggest one, but basically just made a bunch of circles. Oh, okay. And you can see actually I've already added to that data set um, the fake states. Right? You can see that this would be highly unlikely to have three states with exactly the same uh, murder rate and exactly the same burglary rate. And so what I did, I rigged the data, and this is a really nifty way to make your key to make sure that you know, you're doing it correct. Um, so let's look at the data set. Yeah, so here, here it is. Um, Okay, I'm going to have to, I don't know if I can zoom in properly, but, um, so I created three fake states, and I called it, 
legend 3M, which for three, uh, 3 million, I think, right? 3 million population, legend 20M for 20 million. See that? So I just created three new rows and legend 30 million. You know, I figure California is about 30 million, so that, would, that was a good number. And you don't want to do too many, otherwise, you know, it defeats the point, right? If you're and so here, for those three, I put in these numbers. And literally, I put in 3 million, 20 million, and 30 million right there. And that's what's uh, generating this shape right here. OK, right here. Now, of course, this doesn't look right. And it doesn't look right, again, because the numbers are uh, directly proportional and not squared. Um, and if you were doing, I believe if you were doing also squares instead of cir circles, you could just, again, square it. Let's go back to the code. And let's get that piece. Uh, copy. And let's just read it for a moment to my notes. So. Uh, so we're squaring the population data so the circles are proportionate size correctly. Um, so in the earlier plot, twice the population is represented by a circle that's actually four times as big. And a circle is usually the radius squared times 314, right, pi. But because pi is constant, you don't have, you don't have to worry about that. So the main thing is just to square the number. Um, and so here we're going to set it, square the numbers uh, by putting in parentheses the earlier code, crime two dollar population, and then outside of that we put the square root. Okay, and we're also going to tell it how big the biggest circle is going to be. Um, in this case, given the window size, I guess point two works, but it might change for your for your graph, so let's try that. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, that's that's our graph pretty much. And then in Illustrator, of course, we can uh, uh, we can put these inside one another, but aligned at the base, right? So that makes for a better key. And when you whenever you do this uh, key. Just make sure you don't fill them just like your real data. Otherwise, it looks like real data. Uh, and the best way, I think, is to just keep it as a single line. Um, OK, let's see what else is in the code here. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to add the text to the, the labels. Uh, and I'm going to do this kind of quickly. Uh, ah, okay, so now I put a label on every single uh, state, which is nice. And even though it's messy, that's okay. We can clean it up later, right? Uh, there's probably a way to put them, let's say, all to the corner, but then that doesn't really work later on because you're going to have to move them around so that they fit properly, right? Um, so I think it's best to just leave them centered on the dots and deal with it later. Um, and then this is the size, the type size. I don't know what CEX stands for. I forget, but one is default, uh, whatever that is. So in this case, it's half of whatever the default is, which is one. Yeah. You have, you have to do this first, right? And then on top of it, you put the text. So, and then you have to repeat pretty much everything for all these uh, first two, of course, for the position, right? And then this next one for the name, you want to be on that spot. And then this is the size. Okay, so this is going to work. So let's just look at this. So I, I picked now the line that's... Uh, we're going to specify the colors for those circles. Okay, so this one, so it's line 75 if you have the full script. And uh, and now I'm just putting it, you know, with return so it's a little bit more legible, right? So again, X is burglary, 
wise murder, the circles of the population squared, the size of the circle maximus two, and then background. And this is the funny thing about this syntax, but in order to specify a border, a black border, for whatever reason, that's called foreground, FG. And the background, which is the fill, is called background. Or rather, the fill, which is, is called background. So if you do that, you're going to get these guys right here. Okay. Um, and now I can't remember if my illustrator is this graph or not. I think that I made them a little bigger. So let's see what I did. Um, it is that it is possible that it might change in um, once once one exports it. But the trouble with the scatter plot is that once it's done, you can't resize it, right? Because all you, you can't resize the whole thing. Otherwise, all your circles are going to get to be ovals. So you. <laughs> So you have to kind of get it kind of right, you know, before you export it. Uh, in terms of the size, you know, in terms of the proportions. So if you've already sketched out your, yeah. your, your sheet, though, uh, and you know roughly the area that you want it to go in, you can measure that and make that custom size. In, in the export, I think, yeah, I think you can try to control it in the export. So, um, and right, yeah, so right now, it, this doesn't look right. It doesn't look like my graph, you see, because there's still maybe the United States is still there. I don't know why this looks more like it, but um, now let's just try to add text. Okay, this worked. Um, yeah, so you know, whenever something goes wrong, I mean. Depends, right? If you know a lot, you can just fix it right away. But if you don't, you can always go back to what you did before that did work. Um, so I just went back to that. <clears throat> and um, so let's just review it once again. So it's telling to do symbols. The X position is going to be murder. The Y is going to be burglary. Circles are going to be squared and that the number is going to be the population the size is going to be 0.2 and then in order to do them orange with a black border it's background equals orange and foreground equals back and then we added the labels text and the labels are taken from the names of the states and that's the size of the type okay so yeah now let's just export it to a size that we think is going to be what what we like um, and hopefully that will work. Again, this is this area that it's a little bit fuzzy. Um, save as PDF. Uh, great. Test one. Save. Oops, that's. Oh, it did work somehow. Maybe I had it set right from the beginning. What did I do? Uh, save as PDF. Yeah, okay, I had an old custom size that just happens to be kind of what I want, 9 by 6. So about 3 by, for whatever reason, the first dimension is actually the height. I wouldn't do that way. I would put the base to be the first dimension. Oh, wait a minute, unless you change it. Never mind. I guess depending on whether you say portrait or landscape, this can vary. Um, and so now we have it. Um, and now we just need to clean it up in Illustrator, right? So, let me quit this. Let's just open it in Illustrator real quick. And I'm not going to go through all the steps. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to the um, uh, to the one that I made. But let's just see a couple of things that are kind of important uh, that you do. And that is, first of all, get rid of the clipping mask if it has one. So just do select all, 
and then object clipping mask release okay this is gonna allow you to manipulate the stuff a little more easily see for example that was a box that was just sitting there sometimes I turn it into just black and white by pressing command Y you know just the outline um, so there and sometimes I do select all to see if there is you know just weird stuff um, okay an important thing is that unlike uh, when you draw something in Illustrator and let's say you want to do it um, I don't know a red and a okay so if I draw a circle now so this object now it's the it's a simple object right even if I if I use the other tool the hollow tool I'm still grabbing the whole thing right it's one object with two attributes a border and a, and a fill but for whatever reason in R, when you export it, if I grab this guy here, it's two objects, okay? So the fill and the border are two different things. Uh, so, you know, up to you how you deal with that, but maybe maybe there is a way to, yeah, I don't know actually if there is a way to, to group them somehow so that they don't move around too much. But um, just be aware of it, okay? And now, I'm, again, I'm not going to, what I would do, let's see, if I look at my final, what did I do in my final? Uh, there is a, a kind of nice grid, you know, a thin grid. Um, and so if you wanted to do that, I would pick these spots, right? So maybe I would put a line from here to there. And I would just duplicate it. Well, actually, let's let's first say what it is. Maybe a gray. Maybe 50% gray. Uh, you have to play around, right? I mean, you don't know. Right, and then I would maybe put another one here. And I'm just duplicating that, right? Um, and so let's look how I did the legend. I, I mean, you kind of know what these things are, right? Because from the size, and I'm going to turn it again like that. Uh, command Y and then I'm just going to align this Oops, I duplicated no I don't want to do that oh maybe it looks like there's two of them oh never mind one is the <laughs> again yeah not such a good idea uh, all right I don't know which is which which is the fill and which is the thing but I'll have to deal with that anyway that's the way you want them right and now we want to get rid of the fill, but yeah. And probably you want them a little thinner, right? Uh, because they always look nice thinner. Um, <coughs> so let's see, just in terms of making it look pretty, it's, you know, it depends where things fit, right? Don't put the labels in the middle of each circle because they can get confused. As for example, if I put 20, if I put 20 in the middle here, oops, um, you know, it's a little, it's a little hard to say. Okay, this belongs. See, or rather, besides there is no no room, but but this could be ambiguous, right? Is this the center of this circle, or is this the center of the other circle? So. Whenever possible, just leave them as close to the circle as possible, uh, usually on the outside. Okay. Um, anyway, I did a lot of moving around because uh, just to make them fit nicely, right? Proximity is really important. So if you have no issues, you can just line it up in the center, maybe at the top. But like here, for example, well, 
we kind of know this belongs to this because um, because well I don't know if everybody knows California is the biggest but I do so I figured okay this is California and this has got to be Missouri right so do your best you know in terms of the labels um, and, uh, and then in terms of all the other labels just you know straighten up again try to make the final labels match when your graph is reproduced in the final layout which is hard to do but um, you should should try to keep that consistent um, so a just a couple of words about scatter plot and that is that we talked about the fact that and it was really late that, the, that this idea of plotting completely different sets of information on the two separate axes came about because even though geographic maps with longitude and latitudes were you know been around a long time um, it took a while for people to realize that you could apply those two dimensions to anything, any value. And I know some of you is doing one plot in which one axis is like how much wine a whole country drinks versus how much a single person in each country drinks. And so that's a good example of like to see differences, right? Compare. Um, anyway, and then the last thing is that I just created this little opacity thing to just give it you know, a little more dimension and so they wouldn't get kind of hidden behind each other. However, the overlap doesn't mean anything, right? Does it? I don't think so. Yeah. So, I think that's going to be it.